This is about who made it happen and also I'll show you at the end of this film how it all comes to an end. Chart 1. Let's look at items 1 first. This is what Yahweh said. I am Yahweh your Redeemer who formed you in the womb. I am Yahweh who made everything and spread out the heavens by myself. And I firmed the earth and its produce of my own accord, who gave a soul to the people on it and a spirit to those who walk on it. You would have got that in my previous reports. Make a note for yourself that the false Christian teaching is that Jesus was that creation. That's a lie. Item two. In every chapter preceding all of the redemption and salvation promises, watch out for these conditions. And I've listed them there for you. If, correct your ways, do not listen to your prophets, give up your idols, improve your ways, take heed to my words. All these have been missed by the theologians, the Christians and the Jews. Item three, Yahweh said, I make wise men retreat and I make their knowledge foolishness. I make fools of the astrologers before there was a day I was he. Before me, nothing was created by a God, nor will there be after me. That's Yahweh's words. The gods who didn't make heavens and the earth shall vanish from the earth and the heavens and their names will never ever again be mentioned. And item four, some of these gods, dogmas established since the beginning of time, all now controlled by the Masons, Illuminati, Secret Society cartel, and I've listed them there for you so that you in your own time can do your own research and come to the knowledge of the truth. Now we're up to chart two. Notice up the top, all of the people from 830 BC to 250 CE or AD, they were not faithful, loyal servants to Yahweh. And yet they are the people that gave you the Bible that you have in your hand today. Item one, the apostate Ezra, the priest, about 400 BC, and he's got a book in the Bible, 100 to 200 CE, Rabbi Akiva, they were both Talmud scholars, and the Talmud is an abomination to Yahweh. They were instrumental in drawing up the canon of the Tanakh, Jewish Bible, and the Septuagint, Christian Bible. Ezra protested strongly against the canonicity of certain Masoretic texts and the Apocryphas. And I'll let you read that yourself in your own time. I'll come down to item two. Compare the corrupted and fake text from the Septuagint, the Vorlage text, Masoretic text, and from the Talmud with Ezra, the scribe in 400 CE. The Septuagint, translated in Alexandria, Egypt, by 70 Jewish rabbis. Note, they were Talmud scholars. They were direct recommendations from Israel's high priest, the Great Assembly, and Israel's Sanhedrin, right up to Rabbi Akiva, coming into 140 CE. The word Adonai, or Lord, was only substituted for Yahweh in specific instances where it was obvious in any one of the four levels of Hebraic to mean Yahweh. But then after the entire Bible canon was changed to Lord, L-O-R-D, and it's been changed nearly 7,000 times in the Bibles, and of course, they deleted Yahweh 
and put in Hashem in the Jewish Bible. Item three down the bottom, about 750 CE, the Masoretic scribes. Now I've given you a note there. Every time a Hebrew word is pronounced when reading the Masoretic text, we are merely repeating the opinion of some other man, the Masoretes. And you'll read the rest of it there. When they used Yahweh, it comes out as Yehovah with the Masoretic vowel points. And the original arrangement of the book of Daniel was changed and make no sense in a chrono chronological way. And chart three, make a note again up the top there. Over 2,500 years, the Israel nation and Judah, they never repented. They were rejected by Yahweh, 721 BC and 586 BC. Item one, the Jewish leaders put a ban on uttering, speaking the true name of Yahweh. Now that's mind control from Yahweh, the living creator God. As a consequence of the wickedness, Yahweh took his name out of their mouth. You'll get that in Jeremiah 44. In approximately 300 BCE, still referred to, as the Jews today, still used today, ultimately, Rabbi Akiva and his entire minion, they were executed by Rome. And the Talmud Jew priests, who were burning their sons and their daughters, child sacrifices, they were taken out and crucified. And other Jews were banned from coming into Jerusalem right through to about 250 CE. In item two, I've given you a list of texts in the Bible that have been changed or altered or added into. In 750 CE, the so-called infallible Masoretic text has altered and deleted the holy name of Yahweh, as I mentioned before, and that is found in the Tetragrammaton. In its place, the Talmud Jews put Hashem, and they've dastardly substituted Adonai, O Lord. These changes are very deliberate. Item three, Yahweh said, I was here before me. Nothing was created by a God, nor will there be after me. And there's some details there about his name and the changes. But note there in the yellow, this sin, which is also repeated in their Noahide laws, is so grievous and is such a blatant violation of Yahweh's third commandment by bringing his name into naught or nothingness. And they will surely have to answer to Yahweh on his day of judgment, on his day of vengeance. Now on chart four, let's look at item one. All of the people, leaders, prophets, rabbis, great assembly, Sanhedrin, they were all rejected as evil by Yahweh, the living creator God, that also dates back to 780 BC, all the way through to 400 CE. I've given that to you because they're the people also, as I just said, were responsible for bringing the Bibles to the world. My question is, do you think what you have in the Bible is ordained by Yahweh? Do you think the New Testament is holy scripture when it's not ordained by Yahweh, the living creator God? And you should go through all of my reports to get more details on that. Item two, I've given this to you in several reports. In 1948, the current land Israel and Zionism that was founded and funded by and has always been controlled by the Rothschilds and the rest of the secret society cartel, the New World Order elite. The Jewish homeland 
is a scam. It's just a smoke screen and Israel, the poor Israel people are nothing but pawns in their game. They have usurped the name Israel and taken over the land, but they are fake Jews. As I've said to you in many reports, no Jews, no Israel are in existence since the dates of 721 BC and 586 BC. There's three fellows there, Aristus, Josephus and Philo. They are historians and they all attribute the translation and the compilation of the Mishnah, the Oral Law, the Talmud and the entire Bible from about 250 BC with changes made all the way through to 800 CE. The Torah, the meaning of the word is teaching, doctrine or instructions. The Jews claim it to mean law, L-A-W, which gives a wrong conception. Little note there about uh, item three. The Hebrew word for naked is Aram. And the very next text in Genesis 3.1, and the snake was slyer than any animal on the field. And the Hebrew word for sly is Aram. Exodus includes with the instructions on building the temple. But that narrative is a copy of how the Egyptian temple was built to do their cult rituals. Again for Leviticus, as I've given you reports on this. That narrative is a copy of how the Egyptian temple cult were doing their religious ceremonies. The Talmud claimed that God dictated four books of the Torah, but that Moses wrote Deuteronomy. All of the classical rabbinic views hold that the Torah was entirely or almost entirely mosaic, and of divine origin. That is an utmost lie. Now we're up to chart five. Item one. I've given this to you in several reports. There's no command from Yahweh, the living creator God, for any blood sin sacrifice. That's referred to by the Jews as Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement. And this was a ritual, again, from the Egyptian temple cult. This was inserted by the satanic forces to lead up to the Son of God sacrifice for man's sin at the end of days. Yahweh said, three times during the year shall all your men folk appear before me. That's what Yahweh said, and that's in Exodus 23. Not four times. Item two. The warning that Yahweh gave the people all the way through. But if you turn away and forsake my decrees and commandment, and you worship their gods, I will uproot your kingdom, and he's done that, and the temple, I will make Israel to be abhorred, in all the nations of the world. And that's in 1 Chronicles, no, 2 Chronicles. However, this whole evil system is referred to in the Bible prophecy as the mute abomination. That gets destroyed by the hand of Yahweh, the living creator God at the end of days. And you've got the references there. And I've given it to you before. There's a youth group to retain the name Israel, chosen by Yahweh, and they will be redeemed together with the resurrection by Yahweh, not by any Jesus. And that's definitely clear when you read Ezekiel 37 and Ezekiel 38. Item three. The evil ruling elite's God is Lucifer. And I gave you that before. Lucifer, Acker, known as Satan, that they refer to as the great architect of the universe. 
It will bring in the time of trouble such as never before on this earth. And that's mentioned in Daniel 12 and Jeremiah 30, verse 7. The new world order will invoke a one world religion, a global licensed religion for Satan, Lucifer, and no other religious groups will be permitted to continue. The Illuminati claim they have pure blood, a line from the fallen angels, Genesis 6. And they say they are immortal and will travel to the stars. Any adverse attention to them, they reflect onto Jews' Zionism. However, most of these people are not Jews. The founders might have been Jews, but the Rothschild dynasty is in control of them. They founded the secret society of Zionism with members that are worldwide worldwide in banking and corporations, which use the lay Jews as pawns in their evil corporations, governments, IMF, federal banks, and free trade. Now we're up to chart six, and I'm making this report as quick as I can. Item one, the secret society cartel who rule the world include now you've got these on many of my reports and i won't read them all out to you again you've got them there but notice also that they are in control of the military corporation banking fractional reserve finance science education all of the religions all government the judicial system electronics energy, healthcare, hospitality, information, news and publishing, broadcasting, films, internet, music and print, telecommunications, water insurance and particularly the GM food which now numerous countries have taken to banning GMO crops. Have a note there too, on the dollar note, the ASN Fenelio M for Mary on the dollar note. Rearrange those and you've got the word Mason. Item two. These self-appointed New World leaders, they hold their meetings as the Bilderberg Group. And it is recorded the Kabbalah, the Jewish mysticism, is the key of all masonry and occult sciences. Make a note again there because I've given it to you in other reports. The New Testament Bible repeats the Kabbalistic doctrines in the book of Revelation, which leads a lot of theologians into false prophetic dogma, false teaching. Item three, their main goal is to abolish Christianity and all religions and overturn all civil governments. By stealth and lies, already they have converted democratic elected governments into corporations. New initiates, new members for them, they're drawn from college students who are given scholarships and funds, tutored. They become members suitable be to be puppet government ministers, etc. Now I'm going to finish up with the last three charts showing you the Coast to Coast AM with George Nuri, David Hatchett Childress, the archaeological cover-ups. Little note on the, on the side there, the secret society cartel who say they have the right to rule this earth, they've gone to extreme efforts to conceal the technology initiated by the fallen angels. And that includes electricity, aircraft, levitation, etc. More details you can get when you go into their website. These Mason, Illuminati and their cartel of secret societies have concealed from the world an enormous amount of technology which at least we are 50 years behind. They are 50 years in advance. They've hidden numerous archaeology so that they can dupe the world. 
with their false evolution teaching that God doesn't exist. They would not be able to get the world to accept their theology of lies if they allowed everybody in the world to see what they've dug up in the archaeological The second clip is chart eight, more of David Hatcher Childress, the archaeological cover-ups. On the right-hand side, you've already seen that they have gone to extreme lengths, and we're 50 years behind. Down the bottom, the website above gives you many examples of archaeological cover-ups. The secret society cartel have concealed numerous unearthed giants so they can continue telling the world that God doesn't exist. And then they can continue their false evolution teaching. Many giants have been concealed by the Smithsonian Institute, and you'll get that on their website. This cartel wants you to believe that early man was dumb. Now I'll finish up with this chart, chart 9. You've got a picture there of the entrance to one of the DUMBs, Deep Underground Military Bases. And you've got a picture there of a flying saucer, alien secret craft. I also gave you some years back when I did a report for Phil Snyder. They murdered him. He was murdered because he exposed the DMBs. He worked in them as an engineer. And again, you've got to realize thousands of workers were intimidated at the pain of death to keep quiet when they found evidence of giants in any of the archaeological sites that they were working on. So that, this is just to give you an idea of some of the secret societies advanced technology, which no doubt, as I put there, it's a blatantly obvious that the Masons and the Illuminati Secret Society, they've kept it all, kept all the technology for themselves so that they think they will be able to use it to rule the earth. But as you've seen what Yahweh the living creator God that they said didn't exist, you're seeing that the warnings of what Yahweh will do. They are going to get a rude shock at the end of days.